I've been through a lot in the last four years, and uh, there's a lot of good times, and there's been a lot of bad times. I think that the hardest part was telling my family that I wasn't going to play. It's a game. You know, hockey's a game, and this is life, and life's no joke. To wake up and to go to bed and have a headache all day, and it's just, you know, enough's enough. I probably suffered through seven or eight concussions. My name's Connor Crisp. I just retired from professional hockey, and I'm 24 years old. Oh, it's so sad in there now. Oh, I didn't know they closed that. Yeah, they closed it. It's not the tunnel anymore. I was born and raised in Allison, Ontario. I like how they put these trees here. The hard part now is my ego, you know, being in a small town known as a as a hockey player and now moving back home and I had a great opportunity, but now like where I'm at, I get a lot of questions and a lot of people that I haven't seen in a long time saying, I hear you're back home, what are you doing? And I just miss being, you know, that that NHL professional hockey player atmosphere. Well, when I used to play hockey, um, I enjoyed fighting. It may sound weird, but there's no better feeling. Yeah! Colin Greening and Connor Crisp. Yeah! You have 10,000 people in a building that are chanting your name, and you know your teammates are all standing up on the bench supporting you. It's special. It's you know, it's not comparable to getting a goal. It's better than getting a goal. I chose to do that. I was never told I had to fight. If I didn't play the way I did, um, I probably wouldn't have been drafted. I wouldn't have made it as far as I did. I was drafted by the Montreal Canadiens in the third round, 71st overall, in 2013. If I was going to a game, I would say, don't fight, Connor. Don't fight this game. And he'd be like, I can't promise you that, Mom. The scratches, and here is Mathers in the first couple of minutes going to square off with Connor Crest. There was a fight three years ago. It was my first year in St. John's. The Mainers will drop Crest with a couple of right hands. Head off the penalty box. He got a punch in, knocked me to the ice. I got up, went to the box. I was feeling OK. Um, I finished the game. Then that night, I started getting bad headaches. So I played Saturday night. And after that, I said, I have a concussion. And then really, from that point, I didn't play another game that season, so I really never recovered. I had, you know, a daily headache from the moment I woke up. I had a headache till the moment I went to bed. For three years now, really, I still have those headaches. He was down, he was stressed, because I think he knew that he did need to take himself out of the lineup. He's trying to climb that ladder to get to the NHL, and. What I didn't realize at the time was that, you know, it's not like calling in sick to work and coming back a few days. You know, you take yourself out of that lineup and someone else is swooping in there and taking your spot and you don't know if you're going to be back on that bench. Everything was just negative. Anytime I thought I was feeling good, it was almost like I would manifest another headache. I would tell myself, you know, maybe you're not okay. Now I have anxiety. Now the anxiety is bringing along headaches. It was just like a snowball effect. Anxiety was a big thing with Connor, which he never had anxiety. And depression, he never really opened up a lot about it, but I knew it was there. It was incredibly tough every single day, sitting in a dark room, resting. No social media, no reading, no books, nothing. Hi, Connor. Hey. What's going on? How'd your day go? Uh, it was all right. It was long very worried because he's seen some of the best doctors, you know, and nothing was easing his head up. Okay, guys, let's sit down and have some supper. But a whole year off was tough, and being in Newfoundland, right? Being so far away from home was really tough. It was on you, like, but you can't get through the cheese. How was the cheese in that bite, Steve? <laughs> he's mastered the art of hiding behind a smile, so he's very good at pretending that everything's good. My main worry was, like, the seasons after, him getting back on the ice. Because for me, like, I didn't want him to play anymore. I went into camp in September. I felt good. Mind you, still had those daily headaches, still had the migraines, but I kind of put that aside and kept playing. And then it wasn't long, you know, a month into the season, and 
I'd take a few hits and have a couple fights and now the headaches were worse again. And then I started thinking, should I be doing this? Every game he went into, I prayed that he wouldn't fight. And so my main worry was just like one little, one little hit, like what's gonna happen? Uh, I ended up signing a contract in Toledo, East Coast Hockey League. I thought that was kind of my second chance. I had an incident in practice where I, I was hit into a post. My headaches were back and my vision started bothering me. And then from that point, the entire season, I just like wasn't healthy. He would get in the car after a game and I would say, you know, baby, you played so good tonight. And he's like, I could barely see out there. You know, like just tunnel vision. Once I started doing my own research, it was scary to see what could happen. And you know, the fact that he could potentially not be himself in X amount of years. Ex-NHL players um, who used to play a tough role. Um, you see people passing away from CTE and discovering stuff like this. There's some cases out there that you read about and it's, it's scary, you know, you're, you kind of read that I'm on this path, you know, this is what I'm feeling now, this is what I was feeling when this person was feeling then. And... Some days I'll feel super excited, super positive, and then out of nowhere, the snap of a finger, I could just be in a bad mood. And I never used to be like that. Definitely mood swings. like a long lineup at Tim Hortons. Like we'd be having a great morning and all of a sudden he was just pissed. And it took so long for him to not be mad anymore. We were waiting 15 minutes to get a coffee and like that'll ruin my entire day. And it's as, as silly as it is, I can't help it. You can't snap out of it. I learned quickly not to take it personally. And it took a while for him to admit to me like, okay, you know, I'm getting these mood swings. I can't imagine how hard it was for him to have to, you know, hang up his skates and, you know, make that like public announcement about retiring and, cause he's so young. I knew that I couldn't push him. I couldn't, I wanted to get on the phone and say, pack your bags and come home because it's not worth it. He had to make that decision on his own. The YouTube video, really got him and it was fabulous and I think that made his decision. I would give back all of my money, I would give back all of the time. You can take my name off the Stanley Cup twice over. I can't, I can't live like that anymore, you know, I just can't. I don't have a Stanley Cup to give up, I don't have millions of dollars to give up, but yeah, there's a lot I trade in to, you know, just feel normal. Because I was so close, you know, I was so close to making it. It's tough, because I love the game. So. Like every kid, you know, wants to make their, their parents proud. Being drafted was huge, and you always play harder when your family's watching, right? In the hockey world, you're kind of, you're in this bubble, and you don't know what's outside of the bubble. And Connor was really stuck in that bubble, and not realizing that there's an entire world outside of this. We're heading to Orangeville to work with the Pee Wee team. It's fate. It's where I'm supposed to be. You know, I've started this new hockey school. Hey, guys. What's going on? I'm passionate about it. I'm excited working with these kids. But, you know, outside of that, it's difficult to find something to look forward to on a weekend to do or um, just another hobby. Touch pass. I educated myself concussions like uh, a lot of different ways. I seen the movie Concussion with Will Smith, who played the scientist Omalu. I found a disease that no one has ever seen. 
Repetitive head trauma chokes the brain. I was nervous to watch that movie because when it came out, I was, you know, going through the original concussion. We talked to O'Malley about you. Yeah? Yeah. And we want to show you. That'd be awesome. Do you want to see? Yeah, yeah. This is human life we're talking about. And people like him should speak out, should get to the mountain top and shout out loud so that parents listen. Do you want to do this to your son? He's 24 years old. He's 24, 24. Because of a game, why are we placing sports above the humanity of mankind? I don't know, he just sounds like a pretty powerful speaker, right? Um, and you know, hockey is just a game. Um, but it's like all I knew for a long time. So should I have stopped playing sooner? Like, uh, I don't know, maybe, you know, maybe not. I think I made the right decision now. I'm just sick of feeling like this, so it's nice to kind of hear him just mentioned the fact that hockey's just a game, you know? And uh, that there's more to life than hockey. And that's kind of like where I'm at now and where I'm struggling to, I guess, move on. I used to just like love going to the rink. I don't know, I got to see my buddies every day at the rink, right? So now, I got a lot of good friends around here, but it's more I see them on weekends. Tight turn, your feet are moving, feet are moving, stop. The reason I love what I'm doing now is because to kind of fill in the spot of my teammates, now the kids that I work with, unbelievable. They just like really enjoy the game, you know? There's no stress, it's just hockey. Awesome job, you guys were flying out here. That was a lot of fun. You guys are fun to work with, you work hard, okay? Good, thank you. Good work, you guys, good work. I do wish that I was more honest about how I felt about him playing and um, my worry. Is there things I would do differently going through this last three years? Yeah, for sure. What is that next step? Just when I first had that concussion, you know, I, I started training again too early and started skating too early and I still had headaches. It's almost like a little bit of that sparkle has gone down a little bit just because you know that he's in pain. It's frustrating. I wouldn't say I'd be an advocate for no fighting. I think it's part of the game. I think it controls the game. I think it's important. I honestly do. But that's what got you down. Though. And that's what got me down. But I, I don't know. I, I, you can ask a lot of people. I could have got hit from behind. A couple of concussions I had were hits. Connor Crisp. That was the only fight I had that I suffered a concussion. The sports industry. They are very successful. They have succeeded in controlling society, controlling entertainment, and they feel invincible. And they are beginning to disregard the humanity of their sports. So, so it's not CTE, it's not the mal. They will bring themselves down. I do worry, because he still has the headaches every day. He still suffers with them. And we have, we have done everything. And he still suffers. For what? For what? Score a goal? It's not worth it. It's not worth it. The glory, it's not worth it. 